Morning, guys. What you guys up to out here? It's Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Means we got our whole backyard raked up. Britt did the front yard yesterday while I was at work. Looks a whole lot better. We got those uh, lawn clipping bags or whatever from Canadian Tire. They're like special paper bags that you're supposed to put this stuff into. I have never even heard of them until yesterday. Brett told me to go pick them up. We picked them up and then we put them on the curb and they pick them up on Fridays apparently. I've never had so many conveniences. There are perks to living in town. I guess I'll worry about those uh, piles of leaves and grass this weekend. Or unless if I get home early one of the days this week. Well, I want to sort of get them uh, gathered up before they blow away again. We got to rake them all up again, right? <laughs> Never heard of these lawn clipping bags before. And I didn't even know we had that service where the town will come and pick up our stuff. Wow. You can tell I'm a country guy because I didn't even know that was a thing. That is convenient. You know how I know today's gonna be a good day? Because there's a Corvette first thing in the morning. That's a good sign. If you're here. <clears throat> Oh, 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 there she is, in all her rusty glory. It's beautiful. Yeah, she's a bit of an old truck, but you know how it goes. The old trucks are the good trucks. And she doesn't have to be all shiny. She's a work truck. She worked hard every day. And she's been around since before all this crazy new electronic DEF stuff came into play and made everything a lot more complicated. So it's a very simple, simple truck. You know, you put, you put uh, dinosaur fuel in there and go. I like it. <laughs> it's a lot simpler. <laughs> I like the old trucks. I, I actually, I really enjoy driving this one. I hope it lasts a long time. Okay. Still nice and shiny. Remember we shined this up using the bull snot yesterday? Just this bottom part here. I just wanted to quickly give it a shot before I went home and you know, for an old old girl, she shined her up pretty. It, it shined her up pretty good. You know, we're gonna continue on that. It's not gonna make like the tanks shine nice, like a mirror finish, because these are already pretty old and they would have to be redone for that. But uh, just imagine on those brand new trucks. I recommend it. I recommend it. give give Bullsnot a try. Okay, if you see it in the if you see it in the truck stops down in the U.S., I know for sure it's in the TAs. Uh, several other ones if you go onto my Facebook page uh, you'll be able to find it go look for it on the shelf when you're at the truck stops the bull snot products give it a shot it does what they say it does right. oil level is good she's still looking good everything is ready to go there you are my pretty yep starting the day off with an empty flatbed Pulling this down to Morden, and I have to pick up a trailer there. I think that's loaded. That has to come back here. Doing a little switcheroo. Making sure all is good, lights are working. I'll come back around a second time while I spike the brakes with a tarp strap or something so that we can check to make sure the brake lights are working, but I'll do that in a bit. Right now, I'm just checking to make sure that the tires aren't flat. Flat tires don't work good. At least in my experience, they don't work very good. Look at that shiny air cleaner. Oh, look how shiny that is. I didn't do the one on the other side yet. I haven't had time yet. Look at the difference. That's the bolts on side, okay? That's the other side. <laughs> we'll get her all shined up yet, but it's been busy, busy, busy. Not making money polishing the truck. We've got to keep the wheels turning. I'm still waiting to hear uh, which trailer I'm 
I'm supposed to be hooking on to when I get to Morton. We're just rolling through Winkler right now, which is a few miles away. I'll have to pull over here and uh, send them a message. Maybe they forgot to let me know. But it is going to be loaded, and I'm not too sure if this place is one of those places that ties it down for us. I think they partially do. It's like a bunch of farm equipment, augers and stuff. So uh, I think they put a few straps on it just so that, you know, it stays on the trailer as they shunt it around their yard. But I'll have to uh, add all my own securement when I get there. We're also coming up to a scale of sorts. I think it's one of those scales where you just you just pull off the road, like it's a little pull out, and uh, it's only open if they decide to park there. I don't think it's a mobile scale. One second, they're mowing the lawn here. Let's give them a little extra room in case they're throwing some rocks. have been a little old-fashioned and uh, they feel or have felt in the past that a truck stop would bring undesirables to our town now that's kind of offensive when they say it like that their their thoughts are that if you build a truck stop you're gonna have lot lizards and stuff coming and uh, <laughs> what a backwards way of thinking right an offensive way of thinking that's why we haven't had a truck stop built in Steinbeck yet, and it's it's high time we get one built because there's nowhere for trucks to park around our town. For that reason, they think that oh, you know what? If they're gonna show up at the truck stop that you build, they're already there. Okay, you've already got a problem. It's not like they're gonna come all the way from Winnipeg just to hang out at the Steinbeck truck stop. So I, I hope we do get on that and find some parking because drivers who come from across the country, across the continent to deliver to our town have nowhere to park. And it's funny because Steinbeck is full of truckers. Everybody in Steinbeck is either a trucker or knows someone personally or is related to someone who's a trucker. You're either a farmer or a trucker for the most part. Hopefully my videos here are changing the perception of our uh, local leaders a little bit. Changing the stereotypes a little bit because they have some pretty negative stereotypes of truckers that, uh, like I said earlier, is a little offensive. Okay, there we go. See, it's a gravel parking lot, but at least it's a parking lot. It's somewhere you can at least park your rig. Alright, so let's send in a message. Hey! Which trailer am I to pick up? Which trailer am I picking up? Question mark. Send. There's been a few changes uh, in the office in the last day or two. So they're uh, readjusting and uh, 
changing things around a little bit. So I think they're all just getting used to uh, getting used to the changes. I'll just say that because uh, it'll be a little bit of an interesting week. 5:36. Okay, I'm gonna give him a thumbs up so he knows I got it. You always gotta respond. Nothing bugs me more than when you're like communicating with someone like for work purposes and you know you're trying to communicate Hey, you got to do this you got to do that whatever and 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 they don't respond My dispatchers the, the the load gods people I talk to they they they're very good. They're very good I I really enjoy everyone I, I work with And uh, I, I try to be someone that they enjoy to work with as well and To be that you got to respond to them when they give you like like this Go pick up tra trailer 536 in Morton. Don't just read it and, okay, go and do it. No, read it, respond, and say okay or thumbs up so that they know you got the message. Very important. Communication is key in any relationship. When I left for those few months and I went and uh, did some local work elsewhere at another place, there was one guy there who would never respond. Like we had those radios, right? I really liked them and it was easy to communicate with everybody, but you can hear everybody else's conversations as well, right? And everybody else would always confirm, 10-4, got it. Like, here, go here, pick this up. The driver would respond, 10-4, got it. Or go here and get this, 10-4, got it. You got it, on my way. Something so that the people back in the office know you got the message. There's always this one guy who would never respond and you never know if he got the message or not. They'd be like, hey, can you go and get this at this place? Silence. Everyone's like, I, at least I was like, did he get the message? Is he going? Like back in the office, they could see on the GPS if he was moving or not. So I guess they knew if he was moving towards where they told him to go. But if I was in the office, that would really bug me. Really bug me. If, I, if I'd if i be like, hey, go to this address. Uh, they got something for you to pick up. And just silence. I, I wouldn't know if they... That would really, really bug me. Because then you're constantly having to look at the signal, uh, the GPS signal, to see if they're moving and doing what you told them to do, or maybe they're not in their vehicle, maybe they stopped, quick, took a quick bathroom break, and they didn't get the message, or maybe the radio didn't work, and they didn't get the message, and they're just sitting there waiting, waiting to hear from you, but you don't know that the communication didn't go through. It's just all around confusing, and every time that would happen, I would just grind my teeth. It'd be like, that's got to be irritating. That's got to be irritating. So always respond. Always say 10-4. Got it. 10-4 is just trucker talk for you got it or copy that. 536. 536. There's all our trailers over there. One van trailer. The rest are all flatbeds or step decks. to uh, squeeze this in there somewhere. Where am I gonna be able to put this empty? Uh, I'm guessing that's where the loaded trailers go. All the empty ones are here. Right in here. That's our spot. Oh, come on. Wait for this forklift guy. <laughs> All right. We have to wiggle ourselves in here. trucks with the stacks in the front sometimes you got to open the door to see around them so you know where your trailer's going it's kind of annoying but it is what it is looks like we're hitting the spot there real good there we go 
beautiful. Beautiful, like a glove. Trying to slip it on in there. Almost like I've done this a time or two before, right? Just about. Might as well there, how far back are we? That looks good. Got the lines disconnected here. Fifth wheel's been pulled. Landing gear's down. I'm just gonna go see how far back I pushed it. Just double check. I lined it up with those trailers over there more so, but I did go further back than this one. Oh yeah, plenty of room. The road is like 30 feet away yet. We're good. Now we gotta figure out which one of these other trailers is 536. I'm gonna pull that back. It's not this one, is it? This trailer needs a bath. Can't even see the trailer number on the back of this. I hope it's not this one. This one's got a lot of weird stuff on it. But if it is, we'll get her done. We'll figure it out. See, this has got like a whole straight truck box on here. I don't know what that's all about. This is 529. Okay. Thank goodness that's not ours. I think ours is probably going to be one of those over there. What do we got here? We got 522, 535, 525, these aren't ours, 541, 536, it's this one right here. Oh, that looks fun. Oh, and there's no straps on it at all. Not even just to park it here. See, some of them have some straps on it there, you see that? That would have been nice, but okay. So, this is... Uh, this is our load. I'm gonna have to pull it out of here to tie it down, I think, right? I'm really close to this trailer here. Usually that's why they leave a strap on it, or two, so that you, you know you can move it around or at least pull it out without worrying about it falling off. Oh, that would be a disaster. Yikes. All kinds of stuff back here. A bunch of tires all stacked up like this. I don't like it that they're all stacked up that high. Because it's still like tires, they get very wobbly even when you tie them down. Mm, you don't trust them. I have to adjust that to my liking. And these boxes, that's simple. Two straps, and it's good to go. Okay, well, this is going to take a little while here, so. Oh, and then you got this little guy in here. How in the world am I supposed to tie this little guy down? Because the straps coming over those boxes will totally mess that. <laughs> They'll totally miss it. will come over here, down to here. That's loose. Really? Dude, how am I supposed to tie this down? Well, we got assigned a different trailer and this has loose wood on it. That's uh, always nice. A little piece of gold right here, just sitting there waiting to fly off. I'm gonna take that instead. I had to refuse this other load, unfortunately. And that's not like me. I don't refuse loads, but if it's a safety concern, I'll refuse it uh, because I don't want to put anyone's safety at risk on the highway. And plus that would be pretty bad on me and reflect my license on my license as well. Uh, the way that one was put together, uh, there was several pieces, one, two, three, four, five, several pieces that uh, are not banded to anything. They're just laying flat in there and they're pretty light. I mean, I go around the corner over there and they're gonna fall off and they're they're buried in the middle of the freight in such a way that I couldn't get my straps to it. There's no way I could get any kind of load securement onto it. So I can't take it like that. They're gonna have to uh, adjust it a little bit, but instead we're taking these. I can't even get between these trailers. They're so close together. That's okay. Uh, mowers by the looks of it. And this is gonna be pretty easy to tie down because they're all, what is this, four? four per frame here. So I just gotta make sure these frames are tied down and the rest of it is bolted to the frame. I'll double check on that. I have to get up here and look at it. There's a little bit of a different load. They'll just have to adjust that or even just simple bands. If they go in there and just band the loose parts to one of the larger parts that uh, I can get a strap onto, that would make it better already. 
as long as the bands are rated for the proper weight, right? So these are all bolted to the frame here. Mowers. I'm gonna haul these mowers back. Four per frame. All the way to the back there. So I'm gonna deal with this. This is definitely loaded in such a way that I can safely secure it. And uh, they'll figure out something with that other load over there. Uh, and someone else will come get it, or maybe I'll come get it another day once they figure out how to secure those small pieces in there. But I mean, I don't wanna put anybody's life at risk on the highway. If one of those pieces flies off the back, goes right through someone's windshield, that'll kill somebody. That's nothing to joke about. And I won't ever refuse a load. I'll take whatever they give me, unless if it's unless if it could hurt somebody. I think that's reasonable. So they're gonna rework that freight there for us and uh, make it safe for the highway so that we can properly secure it. Always wanna make sure that uh, you're not gonna be losing freight that can go through someone's windshield. Anyways, I'll show you what load I did, did end up taking. <laughs> Good thing I had a lot of straps on me. 26 mowers, 26 straps. <laughs> so they're uh, all on a frame, four per frame on here, see? But they've got a pin here that swivels at the front. It holds it this way, but if you were to hit the brakes, they would all go kerplunk and fall forward. So these straps here are holding it down and holding the mowers back from flopping over forward. It's a pretty simple tie down. Just a lot of straps, it's a lot of work. We're back at the co-op here. So anyone need to mow their lawn? I'm your man. I got your mower. I'm gonna take a quick peek at where they're going, just in case you're curious where our loads go to. These mowers are destined to Vernon, British Columbia, all the way out in BC on the west coast, north of Washington State. That's it for today. A bit of a long day again, but that seems to be every day and I'm okay with that. There's always lots to do. Always lots to do. Once again, we get to crawl into the beautiful Chevy that's boiling hot inside right now. And thank God for AC. I don't know what we would do without air conditioning. How do they do it for thousands and thousands of years? We're so spoiled. We are so spoiled. One second, one second. Oh, those are hot. Whoa. <laughs> Just like me.
<laughs> that was a joke. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs>